Good afternoon, everyone. I'm James Doyle, and it is my distinct pleasure to introduce the next Student Scholar Days presenter, Ms. Delaney Armstrong, a sophomore music performance and music business major from Reardon, Washington. In the music department, uh, we're very proud of some endeavors that we've undertaken, one of which is the Ethos Project, where we uh, explore uh, the programming and, and the music and the, the course of study that we do through the lens of equity and, and inclusiveness. And uh, two things I want to talk about briefly and how this uh, particular presentation came about. Um, one is, is the Ethos Project. The, sec the, the second part of that is in the music business class that Delaney took with me last semester, she began a video blog on um, equity, particularly women percussionists and women composers and women musicians. Um, it's a really nice uh, video log that she has on her personal YouTube page. Also last semester, our percussion ensemble uh, did an entire program of works by women composers, and we featured Delaney on one such work, and she'll uh, mention some of that later. But I think most important is Delaney has a very unique and um, insightful perspective on uh, the stage gap between um, the ma ma masculinity and femininity in the percussion industry. I'm going to turn it over to Delaney. Hi everyone, my name is Delaney Armstrong. I'm a music business and percussion performance major here at Adams State University. A few things about myself, I enjoy Skittles, spending time with my girlfriend, and of course, playing for wonderful people like yourselves. did a rudimental snare solo is not typically performed by women percussionists. The reason for this is, is for its perceived masculinity in the industry. And a term I used to describe this is called the stage gap, and its perceptions of the female percussionist in a male-dominated industry. Now, since I was only given 20 minutes to dismantle the patriarchy, I decided to stick to three objectives. So one, I wanted to understand typical percussion gender stereotypes. Two, perceive the over-sexualization for women compared to men. And three, recognize important and upcoming women in the industry. Overall, to bring awareness to persisting sexism and the importance of representation in percussion culture to bring change. All right, let's get down to business, the cold hard facts. In 2013, the Bureau of Labor Statistics said that 26.9% of all musicians in the U.S. were women. In a 2010 study done by Dr. Megan G. Abe said 17% of college-level percussionists are women. She surveyed over 250 universities in the U.S. Even worse than that, only 2% of the percussion instructors at those universities were women. Finally, only 5% of percussion positions in orchestras are held by women. This has actually declined over the past 35 years, according to the Percussive Arts Society. and went from 55 to 5%. 
I wanted to talk about some of my own personal experiences. They have a really wide variety. I've dealt with some really small things that just, you know, kind of tick me off a little bit to some really, really big issues in the industry. So, first of all, there's this male-only gendering that really happens a lot in percussion industry. It wasn't until I came to Adam State that it really impacted me when someone said, you all, instead of you guys, because now it was like instead of me trying to fit in with the guys or being perceived as one of them, I was now understood for who I was and accepted in that, and I could bring what I could to the table because of that. Next, I was the only female in a drum line. I marched in DCI, Drum Corps International. It's a really high intensity summer marching band. The drum tech that I had would explain everything to the drum line. And then he would look particularly at me and re-say everything as if I didn't understand it the first time or was not as technically capable as them. I also had an experience during auditions where one of the bolts on the stand was really, really tight and I just couldn't get it. So I asked my male counterpart next to me, I was like, hey, could you help me out with this? And he immediately started to go off on why women shouldn't be in percussion, they're not strong enough, and then I immediately turned off and was like, great, now I'm going to have to beat you out of your audition. <laughs> on top, with that, there is the constant underestimation that you receive as a female percussionist. For example, I was at Guitar Center. I just bought a new pair of drumsticks. I was so excited to try them out. So I sat at the drum set, one of the drum sets in there, and I began playing something I'd been working on. And one of the workers walked up to me and he said, wow, I just didn't expect that out of you. And it really hurt me when someone looked at me and judged how well I did something that I wanted to do professionally just because of my gender. There's also just blatant sexism out there. Um, as Dr. Doyle mentioned, I do have an Instagram and a YouTube where I post things about my women in music video series. And I receive a lot of hate for that. And I just delete it and move on. The comment section is, you know, a place you never ever want to look anyways. So finally, probably the most important and just worst one of them all is sexual harassment and assault that happens in percussion and the music industry in general. I've noticed with the Me Too movement happening around, I am on a female percussionist uh, Facebook page and there was just story after story of women dealing with this. I have personally dealt with it and I really want to go out and try to put an end to this because it's completely unnecessary. It's all for XX. In our society, we perceive masculinity as taking up a lot of space and being very present and big and loud. This is why in elementary schools, many young boys go directly to percussion or even low brass and girls go to things like the flute or the clarinet or even the saxophone. There's this big distance between the two instruments it seems where one is perceived as masculine and one is perceived as feminine. It is also believed by many that because women are not capable of being masculine, they do not have that to bring to the table on the instrument of percussion, that they cannot play it well. This is completely untrue, and we'll talk about it in a few minutes. Next, there's this concept I call the mallet girl. It's pretty much the same girl, just everywhere. And what I mean by that is she's usually in the back, surrounded by male counterparts. She's usually the only one. She's playing a mallet instrument, such as the xylophone or the marimba, or like the bells. And I have some examples of that. I was just scoping through YouTube. There she is in the back. She's kind of in the front, but she's still on a mallet instrument. She's way in the back on the bells and in the back. In this video, she's actually playing the least technically difficult part in that piece. So I, like I said, it starts in elementary school. And as we get into high school, even more girls drop out of percussion. Then as we get into college, as these girls have only been given mallet parts pretty much their entire career so far, when they get in, into high school, they're placed at a huge disadvantage compared to their male counterparts on things like snare and marching percussion and bass drum, which gets us into DCI, Drum Corps International. I said previously that I marched DCI. It was an, a great experience. Um, in DCI, the ratio is closer in percussion from male to female. 
However, you mostly see the girls in the pit, which is like up front. It's not, they don't actually march, but they play the mal instruments and auxiliary percussion. You hardly ever see girls in the actual drum line. If they are in the drum line, they're usually on the top two bass drums. You don't really see them on snare or tenors. This is because many believe that they are not physically capable or they do not have the technical abilities needed to play these instruments. I mean, I march snare in DCI and I'm not exactly beefy, so I think girls can handle it. Now I know what you might be thinking. There's a typical type of girl we associate with playing the really like drummy percussion, like snare drum and marching drums. She probably said guy or dude a lot in high school, probably had all guy friends, you know, was probably like captain of the softball team or something. You know, if you're from a small town like me, you're a local lesbian. <laughs> That's me, captain of the softball team. No shame. As I can break through that stereotype for you all, there definitely are women out there who perceive themselves as, a, themselves as very feminine and do play like drum set and snare drum and play it very, very well. Like all art, contrast is exceedingly important. When you have paintings or drawings, you need the lightest lights and the darkest darks to really make it come out and make it pop. In music, we also need the really, really quiet to the really, really loud. In the same sense, we need the femininity and the masculinity that we perceive as a society in music to make it stand out and make it very beautiful. I had the opportunity last semester to perform a concert that was only female compositions, and um, I titled it Composition XX. We played this piece by Andrea Clearfield called Round for Three Muses, and it was so amazing, such a beautiful piece. It really had me challenging both sides of myself, the very, very feminine to the very, very masculine, from the really high singing ranges to the really drum set, almost drum set-like grooves and everything with it. We're going to watch a clip of that right now. Volume. Oh, got it. Thank you. So as I said previously, it really had me challenging both the feminine and masculine sides of my playing, and they shared properties of each other, which was really, really interesting to me. When I was playing a mallet instrument, I had to be very masculine in the way I came at it. Sometimes when I was singing, I had to be very masculine in the way I came at it. For instance, I had an extremely high note, and I just had to really come from the core and really belt it out. Now we're going to talk about the sex factor. If you ever have searched best female drummer in YouTube, and you have to clarify female, because if you search best drummer, you're only going to get a bunch of men up on the screen. You get this. Hottest female drummers in the world with amazing skills. Best, hottest, because you can be both apparently. Female drummers in the world, best female drummer. She's not even in the video, I watched it. Uh, five sexy drummer, hot girl drummers, and battle of the best female drummers in the world, round not one, 
but two. Let's get something straight. I am not coming after these women for wearing what they want to wear. If wearing that type of clothing or something a little more revealing makes them feel empowered as they play, more power to them. And also, I play drum set. When you play drums, it's just, you get so hot. Like, it's hard work. We get this idea, however, that even in their profession, they are not considered their own. They are only there for the male gaze and seen as sexual objects. And that's where we see the biggest problem. If you search hot drummer in YouTube, you get the same exact videos. And notice in that one, you do not have to clarify. Many believe that YouTube just isn't that important. It's just a platform to go and watch videos. But it's not about that. It's about how women are portrayed in the media compared to men. You didn't see one of the girls' names on that list of them. It was just hot drummers. They were perceived as an object at that point. Either this is the case, or I really have to step on my game to get more views, because... <laughs> <laughs> All joking aside, I really wanted to bring in some role models that I have found over the past year and a half or so that have really inspired me and, and empowered me as a percussionist. So first we have Anna Canellis. She's a drum set player and composer. She plays co progressive rock music, usually her own. She has a lot of mixed meters and meter changes. It's awesome. Her original compositions have over 13 million views on YouTube. Shi Yi Wu was born and raised in Taiwan. She left home at 13. She is a world-renowned musician, percussionist, and composer. It's so awesome. She left home at 13 to study percussion in an orchestra. Sarah Hennings is a percussionist and minimalist composer. She was actually just interviewed in TomTom Tom Magazine, the only magazine in the world for female percussionists. There she is, same photo and everything. Last semester, we had the opportunity to play a piece she composed called Settle, where I walk up to a vibraphone and I play the same chord for around 15 minutes and it's slowly getting softer, where another player comes in and she starts to play some dissonant notes in there. I found it to be a very beautiful piece. Uh, I loved playing it, it made my back hurt a little bit, but overall, it was different every single time and I loved it. So to recap, we understood typical percussion gender stereotypes. That was the perceiving masculine versus perceiving feminine. We saw the over-sexualization for women compared to men, especially on the internet. We recognized important and upcoming women in the industry, Annika Nillis, Shi Yi Wu, and Sarah Hennies. Overall, to bring awareness to persisting sexism and the importance of representation in percussion culture to eventually bring change. If you do not believe, with, believe me, or you have different views than me, you have to understand this. Music was created to tell a story. With the lack of representation, we're just going to keep hearing the same story over and over and over again. Thank you all for coming to my presentation. I really hope you enjoyed it. Are there any questions? If there's no questions, then thank you all for coming. <laughs>